five push-ups becomes 10 push-ups real fast. All you got to do is do it and do the practice. And having that mindset, it's just like, it's literally, it's literally everything. And that's just like the more, like, I just feel like it's been deeper and deeper, like embedded in me, like through this time and just, just overall, you know? The compound effect is so real, right? It's it like is. The, those small, little, consistent behaviors that you stick with will totally add up to whatever goal you're, you're pushing towards. What's up, man? Long time to see. How have you been? Yes. I've, I've been good. I've been good, man. All the way across the country, right? You're still out in San Diego. Mm-hmm. Right? Yep, still out here in SD, you know, doing my thing. Yeah, I see. I see you got that nice 1 p.m. afternoon sunshine coming in the window there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good time to film. Lighting's good, you know. And Perfect. I feel like this is usually because most of my guests coming on are usually from the East Coast anyway, so it's just been a good time slot for me. How How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good, man. Just uh, moving along, you know. Just continuing to uh, to pursue these goals of mine and. You know, we're, we're, I saw we're that uh, moves. I saw that uh, you guys were doing uh, for the for the lemon zinger for the lemon um the vibration vibration for the lemon vibration. You guys are doing a new uh, you got the voting thing for the for the next charity to donate to. So it's interesting, um, and it was kind of like tough for us to word it in a way where it's not confusing because it is a little confusing. But we're I, know, I told I voted, and I was like, I was reading it, but I was still trying to figure it out. So basically every quarter we're going to allow voting for a a different charity. Okay. So we let people suggest charities and then every quarter we'll open the voting back up, let people vote on the charity for that quarter. And that's where the proceeds go. So it's kind of like a rolling charitable donation. Oh, wow. We're not picking a specific uh, org to partner with for that tea. It's just like continuously giving back to different causes. Wow. It's a little bit different, trying to have a little fun with it. it how's that been so far? Yeah, I'm, there's a lot of paperwork, too, to go to a different one each time, I imagine. Yeah, well, so if we're not officially partnering with them, okay. uh, we don't need to lock in you know, strict agreements or anything. We could basically just take those profits and then just donate them. Um, so it's actually less, it's less paperwork. It's less work. Okay, if, believe it or not. Yeah. But uh, it's going well, man. I mean, this is our first time doing it. So we're trying to iron out any kinks. Um, I've got a new digital team that uh, we put together. So we've got three new people now, part of our digital team. Nice. We're like rolling out some really fun initiatives. And it's it's getting like a lot. It's like becoming very fun, you know, because we're like working together. We've got like a lot of like team momentum building, different Mm -hmm. ideas coming from different people. And it's it's always cool to have different perspectives on things so for you right now like being an entrepreneur that since most of your business is it's digital during the whole quarantine thing like how did how did this switch up for you this whole time frame you mean since quarantine like what adjustments we've made what adjustments have you had to make yeah man um to be honest i think this whole thing wound up being really good for us um, because I was starting to get shiny object syndrome a little mm-hmm. bit. Like I was starting to chase things that felt cool or sounded cool or, you know, uh, I have these like grand visions, which is good sometimes, but it's also good to kind of like reel myself back in mm-hmm. and, and the quarantine kind of did that for me. It forced me to do that. I mean, we were looking at potentially opening up a cafe in Philly. We had like a whole bunch of things going in the world. Oh, wow. Which, hey, man, like, again, sounds cool, would have been cool, could have made it, would have made it happen. Probably would have burned myself out doing it, but I would have made it happen. But this whole thing really kind of brought me back to my my core vision when I started this, which was like, hey, we're building like a dope e-commerce brand that's able to reach people all over the world. And I want to keep doing that. And if there's like a physical space in the future that kind of fits into that, um that's great but you know it's like you gotta gotta take those steps and um it actually 
there's another opportunity that popped up less of a cafe, but more of a headquarters mm -hmm. uh, with like a small retail space. So that's something we have coming uh, to Haddonfield soon, which is pretty dope. Nice. Yeah. That's so I'm awesome, excited about man. that. Yeah. I'm excited to see you making moves, man. You know, I've, I've been drinking the tea every day in the pod. So how have you no. been? I've been good. Like this quarantine thing has definitely been, um, there's been a lot of, lot of growth during this time, obviously, as most people. Um, I mean, one of the biggest things, I feel like I've grown so much in uh, even like my content sphere of things overall, just like me putting myself out on the internet and doing stuff. Like I wanted to really get back to doing my podcast this year because I wasn't even doing that in the first half of 2020. And um, I, um, and like even like with TikTok blowing up, like there were so many TikTok videos I was making back then that like I'd ever thought about putting out on Instagram and more people knew me anyway. So even that little shift, just like, oh, I can put more stuff in more places was something that was kind of big to me. Um, I've been driving for like Uber and doing deliveries for Uber Eats. So like I've, I've, I've recently restarted training people again, but during that first like half of COVID, it was just like, you can't do anything. So I was, yeah. I was driving a lot, but um, it's given me a lot more allocation of my time. So like now like, I've been able to control my schedule a lot more so I can schedule stuff like this, as opposed to saying, I got to train Cindy at five and Jim at seven and, you know, everyone else kind of fitting everyone else's schedule. I can kind of base things off mine, which has been fantastic. So I'm like, I want to write a blog or do, a podcast or edit something I just know what I have to do to chunk that time out and I'm like yeah like I'm I love this feeling so I've been I've been very good uh definitely a lot of mental growth like I'm gonna have my website done by the end of this month maybe so that's gonna be cool to have a nice like home base for people to kind of get a feel for me now so I feel like a lot of the things that I've been doing I'm kind of like the the, the pots I've been cooking I'm definitely getting the seasonings of them a little bit more now you know I'm ready to go into that next stage Love it. Love it, man. Yeah. Are you, so when you're training, are you like with a gym or is it just kind of like one-on-ones? Is it like outdoors somewhere? Is it somebody's house? So or? I, um, I was training in a gym first. I was at one of the 24 hour fitnesses first, but then, um, I've been doing training outside to like in a local park, kind of just rocking and rolling. Um, okay. I was talking to, I was talking to a couple of gyms to figure out what I was going to do. Cause like certain places, everything is still, most of the gym shut down again over here. So it's not even like I could either way. The couple spots I talked to, but like overall, gym thing is not really as feasible as it was before. Mm -hmm. So local park stuff. Um, I might do a boot camp. I'm thinking about that, but I don't know if I want to do that yet because I'm debating if I want to do it at the time. I'm definitely going more into online training. So that's why kind of what the website is for. Give people a little more context, a little more information to kind of get a feel for me and like my training style. So that way they can just we can talk about it from there. Um, but Overall, like it's just been very, this year's just been very like, something's gonna happen, you gotta adapt to it, you know? You gotta adapt, man. Yeah, I think that's, that's the big lesson for everybody, right? It's like, I mean, there's a few lessons, but A, you gotta adapt like, like you have. And now even your mind, you're thinking, okay, let me set something up online because that's kind of like hedging against a potential resurgence or if there's another shutdown or whatever, it's just another channel to reach those people and spread education and fitness. Um, but I think it also forced a lot of people to look inward at their current state. Yes. And a lot of people realized that maybe they weren't as happy as they thought, or they weren't as fulfilled as they thought. Um, and it's given a lot of people, I think a time to reconnect with certain things, whether it's internally or whether it's their family. I mean, think about how many families have been just like locked in a house together. Yeah you know, and hopefully they're like eating more meals together. Hopefully they're conversating more. Hopefully they took advantage of that to reconnect. Um, so yeah, man, it's, it's been a strange time for, for everybody. It has. Have you uh, had any, cause I've seen you've been doing a lot more. Uh, oh, I've seen the post, but you're doing a lot more mace training now. Um, like, have you had any other cool insights just between either working out or just mentally as well? Um, yeah, I just, uh, in terms of insights, you know what? I've been really focused on like stretching a lot more. Um, as I get older, it's just something that uh, it, it feels necessary at this point. Like, I, agree. I mean, I have my little routine in the morning. Every morning I get up, I do some stretching, you know, loosen up the back, loosen up the hips, um, neck rolls, the whole deal. Um, and then I'll try and hit some stretching in the evening sometimes. 
if not, uh, I'm doing some like high intensity workout, whether it's with a, whether it's with a kettlebell or just body weight stuff. Um, started kind of getting back into the running thing, doing some mm-hmm. sprints and some distance. Um, insights really just like be with my body more, just pay attention to my body more, which is something that I like everybody knows they should do that, but it's like, you have to remind yourself sometimes to really pay attention to your body and give it the rest it needs, uh, stretch it when it needs to be stretched. Absolutely. You know, and just even when you're doing those movements, it's like really trying to be conscious and being with your body when you're doing those movements, not just going through the motions, but like feeling what muscles are contracting, what, you know, which ligaments am I stretching, you know, um, all that stuff. Just been trying to really dial in on, on uh, being more conscious and being more connected to my body. I agree with that too. I've definitely spent a lot more time. Like I haven't stretched as much as I'd like to. I definitely need to stretch more, but as far as like making sure I can take care of like how I'm standing and uh, I had, I had a little injury on my ankle that I did like just, I rolled it doing something wrong. I haven't put a lot more time just like rolling out my ankle, doing a certain amount of stretches every day. And it definitely, like, there was a lot of things on my list, like, oh, I want to do more core work. I want to do more stretch work. So I, I've I've had time to do, like, little things. Like, I do dead bugs now every day. So that's something I felt really good. Like, I used to have a lot of lower back pain. And that's really helped me, like, kind of keep my posture a lot better throughout the day. And, uh, like, even driving now so much, too, because I might be driving, like, eight hours some of these days. True. So, like, I'm spending enough time kind of counteracting some of that. And working out at home has been, like, a love hate thing you know it's it's good because it feels it's 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 convenient you know i can leave my house and then just make it work and at the same time it's like i'm still in my house still you know and running something i actually started doing more too but even that i'm like i thought i would never run too i was never like never like a cardio kind of guy at all and ended up being up that way though yeah it's uh it's good to have a, like a nice balanced mix of things, you know, and that's it is. even like during this time, again, I think it's, there's been this weird kind of low level anxiety for most people, like whether it's just like, Hey, we're kind of trapped. We, we can't go out as much. We can't see people as much, can't connect as much. So it's forced us to, again, be with ourselves a bit more. And um, what makes it like, I feel like we're looking for things like, ways to change up our routine a little bit to make things more fun. And that's, Mm -hmm. at least for me, that's like, you know, so I'll switch on and off. I'll do like the kettlebells one day, then I'll hit the mace another day, then I'll go for a run and just versatility and balance and trying to have fun with it. And so you don't get too bored with the same old mundane Mm -hmm. set setting and workout. Um, Yeah. I actually, there was a clip you had posted the other day with your previous guest or a couple guests ago where you guys were talking about um, making different spaces in the yeah, house. Yeah, yeah, with Bird, yep. That, that was cool. And um, it made me think also, if you have a small space and you're, you don't have all these additional sections to turn into whatever there's the fitness section over there the office maybe you just have a small space where it's kind of everything and then it really becomes the set right so it's like how can you create how can you turn this one space into a different feel mm-hmm. whether it's with lighting whether it's with music like you know maybe you have something that you set up and you're like okay it's fitness time now like the, i got the red lights on i got this music going i've got my my timer over here and it feels more, you totally can transform a room just by transforming the, the, uh, like the setting of the room. That's very true. I think even moving around, even moving around like certain furniture thing, it definitely gives it a new feel, a little bit of feng shui, however that, how that works. Uh, with you, right, right. Um, with your, as far as your schedule, like how do you usually break up your day? Because you, obviously you have the training and then you have all the business things you have to take care of. Yeah, um, so pre-quarantine, I was hitting all my workouts in the morning, like getting up and uh, I was working out with like a few friends and we were like very consistent. It was like a daily thing, which was awesome. And I really missed that. Like I missed that, uh, like that kind of like camaraderie and 
just hanging out and, and we're all pushing each other. So now like I felt a little bit more of a shift, especially with some of the changes in, in the business. And I have a team now and we're starting meetings in the morning sometimes. And so I've been finding myself really hitting my workouts, like my harder workouts later in the day at this point, like mm-hmm. 6 PM or later, sometimes it'll be like nine and I'm like still working. I'm like, crap, let me get a, let me get a workout in or something. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, uh, mornings I'll usually get up. I hit my stretches, let the dog out, take him for a walk, which is nice. I always get like a nice 20 minute walk in the morning, hit my stretches. Um, if I'm on point, I'm hitting a meditation. That doesn't always happen. Um, and then if I haven't written my goals down for that day, the night before, which I try to do, then I take some time that morning, write all my goals down for the day, hit my priority list and make sure I'm like aligned with my day. And of course you got to be adapting as things pop up and putting yes, a fire out here and there. But yes, that's, do. that's basically like the start of my day. And I feel like if I'm on point with all those things, when I wake up to set everything up, I usually have a more productive day. Yeah. Nice. And nice. typically I'll like fast, I'll fast until like anywhere between one and three, sometimes later. Oh, wow. Fasting too. I, I love the intermittent fasting. That's like, just, yeah, that's, I don't know. It works. It just works well for me. I feel more productive. The second I start putting food or mm-hmm. like heavy substance in my stomach, I'm like slowing down a little bit, you know, that's just for me anyway. I got to try that. Cause I was, I was thinking about fasting too. It's one of the things I had on my list to uh, get into. I just didn't, I just didn't know what way I wanted to do it, but yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to factor that in before the end of the year. I just don't know when I'm going to do it. That's a good idea. But, um, uh, you, did you have, did you already have a team? Like I know you, you and the baboon were working together before. Um, Shout out baboon. And so now you have a full team. So you have like full like zoom meetings and like, how does that, how's yeah, that going uh, now? So this is all like very new for us. Like, um, it was me, Baboon, and a couple other like part-time like legal counsel, and I have a consulting partner out on the West Coast, like more kind of part-timers. And although the team now is still part-time, it's like much more structured, which is great. So uh, we're doing Monday morning meetings, uh, nice. 9 a.m. meetings every Monday, and then we do 4 p.m. meetings every Friday to kind of close out the week. So really like to build team momentum and then to to kind of bookend the week so we could kind of keep ourselves accountable check in with each other see what our goals are Um, and then of course we use some tools during the week to keep communication open we use slack so there's like a slack channel for the whole digital team Uh, we use trello which is a great tool for like um, basically creating tasks and task management and assigning people to different tasks and um the team that we have is they're awesome i mean we're four we're only four weeks in working together but like everybody's really starting to find their groove um and it's been a blast like just kind of getting to know everybody and learning everybody's strengths and um seeing how we can all work together and then it's a new challenge for me to try and kind of be the glue that like holds everything together and you know, improve my own leadership skills. Like what can I do better to better serve them? Cause that's really what it's about. It's like, mm-hmm. how can I serve the team? Like Gary V talks about that all the time too. It does. How can I serve the team? Um, so it's a, it's a grow, it's a growing process for me too. It's trying to figure out the best way to do things without being too constrictive. Cause I want everybody's like, everybody's so smart, right? Like everybody had brings their own unique skills and abilities and uh ideas and i want those things to shine through so i'm really trying to find the balance between um being goal oriented and game planning without trying to be too restrictive on the ideas that are coming to the table Mm -hmm. you know and it's been fun man it's been a fun process to try and navigate and work work with these individuals and they're 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 kicking butt so far so 
I right. imagine so, man. And then having to do it all remote too is like a whole other factor, you know, because at least you like, you had like that same like team, like you can at least smell each other's farts, you know what I mean? Kind of feel. <laughs> <laughs> Better do everything digitally. I don't I guess. know if anybody wants to smell mine. <laughs> 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 but uh having that having to do it all digitally i imagine is definitely a process but i agree man like the, the 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 process and like the ups and downs of learning about like oh man i wasn't good at this but now i'm better at this that whole that whole jump has been basically been what 2020 is i feel like it's been about like i think i always liked it before but i definitely like it a lot more now because i'm just like oh like i can i can do this and i can get better so i imagine you feel the same way with you and your team right now yeah hundred percent. What else have you found yourself? Um, is there anything else that you've been working towards improving in your life or doing more of, or like being more consistent with in your, in your lifestyle? Um, let's see. Um, fitness wise, I think I'm pretty adequate on that. Like I think I'm thinking I'm, that's one thing I'm like, all right, I can play with that a little bit more. I've been meditating a lot more. I keep preaching meditation. Like I've been from doing I started in February just doing 10 minutes every day and I've kept that up. And then two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, I started doing 30 minutes every morning on Wednesdays. So that's like, that's been like my progression for that. And um, it feels, it feels really good, man. It's one of those things where like, I didn't know how much better I feel until I did it. And like, I can only, I don't even know how to like, the only way I, did, I can describe it is I feel like before, like, I was like driving and like in the rain and like the rain was just coming on my wheels or coming on my windshield. But now with the meditation, like the windshield wiper is coming on a little bit more now. So I can kind of see things a little bit slower and a little clearer when they're coming at me. And just the process of that kind of seeing me progress from here to here. And then like the time, the timing of things as well too. Like I feel like I really got a lot better at controlling my schedule. So if I'm going to meditate at this time, I got to do this. If I'm going to work out this time, I got to do this. Got a podcast here this year, you know, I'm going to see this person's birthday. I'm going to this birthday thing. Just like the time management skills are definitely elevated this year. Um, I feel like, uh, I mean, I've been like calling like my family a lot more too. So like relatives that I wouldn't even, people I haven't, I didn't even call in the East coast when I lived there. I'm like calling now, like, Oh yeah, make sure you're good. Like how's grandma, how's great aunt. Da, 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 da. So I think, um, like you were saying kind of that shiny object syndrome, um, and kind of going back and realizing like, okay, like there's a lot of core things that I really need to just focus on and get into like back to those fundamentals and making sure like I'm sticking with my base things have definitely been, been like what I feel like I've been focusing on. The other thing that I've actually learned a lot more too, even as far as just like, um, like my interaction with stuff I do digitally I feel like I'm thinking more about like the people watching that I did before too. So like, okay, who is, who is watching this? Who's consuming this? And what do they want out of the value of that? And how do I give them more of what they want? And like, I got always, was, that always was like the theology before, but like, I can just feel like it's a lot more like resonating in my mind almost. Like I, I can just, I just feel like I've hit a new level, but it's not like, it's still not visible yet, you know? Like, you know, when you're in the gym, like you can lift heavier than you did before, but it's still, you can feel the strength, but it's not at the point where you can get that next plate on yet, but you know, you got it now. The next level of confidence, that next level of just like seasoning, like it definitely hit. And like, I'm just excited to see like what, where it's next. Cause like, I feel like my power is just like kicked in now, you know? That's great, man. So you're starting to really feel the, like you've been putting the work in. Mm -hmm. And now you're starting to see the results. Yes. And sometimes it's like a slow progression. And, you know, the same thing. You look in the mirror every single day. You don't always see the progression. But then you look back at a photo from whatever, a month ago, two months ago. And you've put, been putting in that at work. You can see the difference. It's kind of the same concept, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think fitness is such a big staple for, like, mindset that, like, I just can't. It's the only way I can. Every time I feel like I'm bad at something or see someone struggle with something like if you can put that fitness metaphor in there because like five push-ups becomes 10 push-ups real fast all you gotta do is do it and do the practice and having that mindset it's just like it's literally it's literally everything and that's just like the more like i just feel like it's been deeper and deeper like embedded in me like through this time and just just overall you know the compound effect is so real right it's it like is those small, little, consistent behaviors that you stick with, 
will totally add up to whatever goal you're, you're pushing towards. It will. And they could affect you negatively too, right? You could have a negative compound effect as well, which is, which is crazy. I was thinking about that the other week. Like think about all the compound effects that you might have from like wh whether it is scrolling through your phone too much or whatever it might be. There are negative things or, you know, if somebody's a smoker or, you know, there's all these things that add up over time where it's like, okay, if that person smoked one cigarette, is that going to kill them? Probably not. But 10 cigarettes a day over the period of however many years, that's going to add up to some bad stuff. Same with like three hours on your phone, scrolling through Instagram every day for years and years and years. Like that stuff's going to add up mentally. That's going to be taxing mentally. Well, uh, yeah, well, it's really ironically, we, we talked about this on the first podcast. We talked about compounding on the first podcast we did together. We did, didn't we? We did. We did. And just for you guys, the new people watching, like Joe was the first guest. He's the first person I interviewed in my podcast, like period. OG right here. Like the OG, OG, the very <laughs> first guest. So At the library. <laughs> the library, just to show how full circle things go, man. Like I'm awesome. already like 20, I don't know how many episodes I'm in now. And a lot more seasoned in the game, you know. We've grown so much, but we've still got so much growing to do. And just like the process of compounding and just coming back together full circle. I mean, this podcast is the prime example of that coming to fruition because think about where you were when you started, even just like your natural flow. You're just, you know, it's like you've done it so many times now and obviously you can continue to improve on things. And I'm sure you're always like assessing, oh, I could do this better. Or I could do that better. But just where you're at now compared to day one in the library. Yeah. You know, it's it's incredible, man. It is incredible. Thank you, man. I I, I feel it. Yeah. I feel it, man. And um and just watching like you because you only had three flavors, three type of teas. I feel like yeah. back then. Yeah, we had our three. We had our chocolate hustle, the orange dreamsicle, and the coconut warrior. Yeah, our, like our three. Yep. That's nuts. Like now we got a full six. That's what I'm saying. Like the, the compounding man would trying to anybody listening, like just starting you gotta plant the seeds if you want to get the forest. You gotta yeah. start today. That's 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 all only way I can say it. it's, it's it's gonna be rough, it's gonna take some time, it's gonna take it forever to get there. But if you don't start now, it's gonna look up three years is gonna be gone, four years is gonna be gone, five years is gonna be gone. And it's just like it it the time is now. Yeah. The time is yeah. now, man. Yeah, it's easy to create excuses, right? It's easy to tell yourself, oh, I could start that next month when I get X, Y, and Z equipment in. Or, you know, we could always find excuses and ways to justify delaying things. Uh, and that actually goes, that kind of goes back to the book that I'd referenced that you commented on, on our Instagram post. Uh, the War of Art, Stephen Pressfield talks about this, how we create our own justification. We create our own resistance, our own mental resistance, which tricks us into not pursuing things, which tricks us into not moving forward with some of these goals. And um, learning how to recognize when you're doing that to yourself and then saying, oh, I, you know, I see what I'm doing. I see what I'm doing now. Why am I doing that? And there's usually like, you know, maybe you could trace it back to an attachment or a reason why, you know, whether it's fear-based or whatever it might be. But if you could start to recognize when you're doing that and then just pushing through and overcoming it, um, that's just such a powerful tool. Because we, we all do it, you know. I'm sure even like Jocko Willink probably has days where he wakes up and he's like, I don't feel like doing this, this but he does it. He gets he up it. and he runs however many miles he runs at 4.30 every morning. Mm -hmm. So it's like overriding that natural resistance that our brains try and trick us with, you know. The mind's a funny thing, man. The mind's really a funny is. thing. So what are you thinking about doing? What are some of like the next steps you're kind of playing with for, for Wise Ape? So we have, um, we have the new headquarters opening up in Haddonfield. Mm -hmm. In the next uh, few weeks, we're doing some like reno in there and stuff right now. Um, so that's like a big, that's a big move for us. Um, 
which is cool because that's going to serve as like packing, shipping, fulfillment area, but it also has a commercial space. So we can now start creating one-off specialty tea blends. Um, so likely we're going to roll out some loose leaf teas. We're probably going to start offering all of our teas like lemon vibration in loose leaf uh, as opposed to just tea bags. Um, so really looking to expand some of our product lines, um, expand our product offerings, um, brainstorming with the, the new team to really come up with some like cool new initiatives to, to branch out, to, to better serve our community, um, to better serve some of our nonprofit partners, um, and just keep creating like fun, fun and engaging stuff. You know, it's like, we want to, we're here to like inspire people to be the best versions of themselves mm -hmm. and then sell some dope products that help you achieve those goals and bring health and wellness into your life. Um, so yeah, it's fun, man. Cause it's like the process, the process can get very stressful and lonely sometimes like without a team, you know, it's like, I, and often, at least for me, like in the beginning, like the early years, I, I'd be in my own head a lot. And like, you know, I would talk to friends who maybe were entrepreneurs or business owners, whatever, but like, it can be a very like lonely, mentally lonely place sometimes. Mm -hmm. So having a team for me has been like, just awesome. Cause it's like, you start building that feedback loop. Like you could throw ideas and ideas are coming back at you off of your ideas and then something starts snowballing over here and then there's some other input over here and it's like this cool we're building this this awesome like little beautiful vision together and that's awesome it's just a lot of fun man yeah so i'm ex i'm excited to see where we go we have some big goals in internal goals we have some new products we're working on um we've got the new space and yeah that's just awesome, building man. momentum that, that's all it is building momentum man yeah. it's amazing what what a couple of years and a couple of months can do it's all all it's about i'm actually really excited to get a team too that's like one of the things that like that's one of my one of my like process goals i'm like yeah like i got a team now that's gonna be a big day what would you i got some work to do first, before there what, what would you say is your first like if you were to bring somebody on board to like help out with something tomorrow what task or what tasks do you think would be the most helpful to you that's a good question that's a real good question uh what editing, would i want like editing stuff like um I, if, if someone did edit it for me it would make my life a lot easier then i also don't mind doing that either though like i don't like i it's kind of relaxing too so i don't wouldn't the time taken isn't like the worst part of it okay it might be someone God, if someone could, oh man, you know what though? I might, it might have to be the editing actually, just because like, I, I don't mind it, but if someone else did it, I can just do stuff a lot faster. So yeah, that'd be the first thing. Now, you might just, you just gave me my first little thought gem. Yeah. So I guess, well, when, when I have my editor at some point, like I'll look back on this and be like, oh shit, I didn't have an editor back then. Yeah. I mean, it's always good to learn the fundamentals yourself. And then when you're hiring for that position, you have a certain expectation of like, you know how long it took you to do stuff. And hopefully the guy you bring in just like, is does it even faster yeah. and even better. And you're like, cool, great, you know? And um, that's definitely part of growth too. It's like letting go. And it's good to learn how to do those things because you get the fundamentals. But then there's a point where it's like, you do pass that torch off to somebody and you kind of let go and you let them shine over there. And then it frees up your time to go shine somewhere else. And then all of a sudden you start building, 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 and you're, you're feeding off each other. Um, yeah. I mean, it really depends on where your time's being spent now and where else you could be spending that time if you didn't have to do certain things. I think actually a pretty good gem to think about. Uh, Cause I've been wanting to, uh, just for myself, I've been wanting to make like, like a list of like order list of how things have to like take down and whatever order it is. So I think that's a good idea. And for you guys listening. Um, yeah. So I think one 
just to kind of get the idea, which you just gave me a good idea for me and for them. Um, you know, just listening at what you like to what your biggest problems are right now. Maybe like what your biggest problems are, what your biggest, where you're spending the most time at right now and where would you like to spend the most time? Like out of those three things, and just try to find a way to fix those problems. Because I'll tell her, everything really is just problem solving. It's not even like the, actually, to bring it back again, one of the biggest things I realized this year was that everything that I was doing was, it's just a problem and like it can be fixed. I got that from reading out Ray Dalio's book, Principles. And he was talking about like problems. Great book, by the way. But um, what I was saying was that like, I think about things kind of like a, uh, like a Google search engine. So like the first thing is like, how do I, like, how do you lose weight? Like, that's like, okay, that's the big, big problem. But then it's like, okay, how do I count calories? How do I train this body part? How do I do that? And then once you can answer those little, those more specific questions, you'll get better answers and get better results. But it all starts with kind of like asking what that original big question is and then going down and fixing the smaller questions from there. So the power of your questions comes from the power of your answers. The power of your answers comes from the power of your questions. Power of your questions, right. I read Figuring that somewhere too. How to, how to ask the right questions, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah, that was good. I'm glad you asked me that. You just like gave me a whole new train of thought that I didn't think I had in here. I mean, you, you don't know, man. You might be able to find a, like a VA, like a virtual assistant um, eventually who can both handle some of your like inbound setup for like the calls and all that stuff and do editing like there might be somebody out there who can like totally chop up the video and audio and even spin it out into like other little clips or visuals that you could throw on your social and you might be able to find somebody who's like just really knows that realm or somebody that wants to grow into that realm who wants to learn um and then you, you have time to to do some other things. Um, yeah, you just completely changed. Like, like that's now it's already a thing. Like you just, you just literally just put it in my head. And now I'm like, oh, all right, that's something I wasn't thinking about before that I'm gonna put it in my head. So thank you for that. I think it shows the power of conversation, guys. That feedback loop. You just steel sharpen steel. Hundred percent steel does sharpen steel. It's a, a lot of it too, Dom. Is like, there's the time portion of it at least this is what I felt too. having a team. It's like all these other little things that I were, that I was doing before the team came in. So yeah, have I freed up some of my time? Absolutely. But at the same time, it's freed up this like mental chunk out of my brain. It's freed up brain space too, you know, cause like think about the, the physicality of doing something, the time you're doing that, but then just think about what's the, like the software in your brain that's just running in the background because you, you know you have to do this or you're thinking about that other thing or you're thinking about this. And it's like one more thing you can kind of like take out of your brain space because you know somebody else has, has it covered. You know, and that's, that's huge. Shit. That's that huge, is huge. Too. Yeah. Brain space, man. Fucking brain space. Damn. <laughs> Damn. So have you... um. One thing I also want to know with you too, just, just for the fun note out of it, have you had any other new recipes for like things to do with the tea? Like I used to, like I did um, the silverback style for the with chocolate hustle with the the uh, coconut oil inside the tea, but have you had anything else just for anyone listening? So we do have a recipe section now up on the uh, website. Uh, we've been working with this awesome uh, nutritionist, Jordan Stradley, uh, and she's created some really bomb ass recipes on there. She's got a bunch of stuff on there. Um, but aside from that, like something I've been playing around with uh, more often that's like more basic is just mixing the teas together, which, you know, so I've been doing like, I'll do like the lemon and blueberry together or sometimes in the evenings, I'll do like the lemon and the orange together because they're both herbal teas, no caffeine and just like really chills me out, kind of puts me in a good place. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll experiment, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, it's always fun. Or it's blending in, like, mushroom powders and stuff like that. Mm. Like, I'll take um, – God, I don't want to give away too much here. Oh, we're, don't, don't, we're, don't, work, don't we're working on away. some new stuff, Dom, oh, but, yeah, 
You can it's keep all it good. top secret. You can keep it top secret. I was just curious because, like, I get real caveman-ish, so, like, I don't mind things. Like, I just, like, I, like, I'm pretty simple when it comes to stuff, but I always forget to try out new stuff because I'm just like, well, this is working, so why, why fix it? And there's always another step that, like, boom, one more thing could just change your whole world. I had, um, I had Bibbs on here a couple podcasts ago, and nice. uh, he was talking about, he, puts, he told me he puts his uh, oatmeal in a rice cooker. And I was like, such a simple idea. That's such such a good idea. And I did it, and I was like, oh my god! Like, what was I? Even, why did I even think to do this before? So like, you know, one little gem could change your entire thought process. Little hack. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like one thing I'll do sometimes if I want iced tea or something cold for the next day is I'll get like a mason jar. I'll fill it with like filtered water. I'll pop a few tea bags in there the night before when I go to bed, and then I'll just leave it in the fridge. And in the morning pop the tea bags out and now I got like my mason jar filled with like cold brew iced tea for the for the whole day so that's like a little easy way of just like you got something cold nutritious and refreshing for you, for yourself the next day when you wake up well, it's kind of cool. yeah all right yeah something that's something I can do then okay 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 so Joe um for the people listening uh how do they find you how do they find out more about the tea well i mean besides the part that i plug it every time but what uh what else uh how do they find get in contact with you yeah yeah please come check us out on instagram we're the most active i'd say so wise ape co on instagram um check out the website wiseapetea.com um every quarter we're doing these new uh this new voting like i said for lemon vibration so we're going to be choosing a new nonprofit charity that we donate to every single quarter from the profits of lemon vibration tea so we're always going to have a way that you can vote or make suggestions if there's a nonprofit organization that you really believe in you feel strongly about you can come and vote and suggest that nonprofit to us and it might be listed as a potential nominee in the future so awesome guys yeah well um definitely vote joe thanks so much for being on the show guys thanks so much for listening and uh take care Oh.